Key concept number four. Energy management systems determine vitality and derive from, from and define fundamental rhythms. Um, now, what in the heck is an energy management system? Well, all of biological life is driven with two ends. Get enough to eat and have enough sex to reproduce, right? There's more to that than that. There's the self-transcendent gene. There's all kinds of stuff. I'm not trying to simplify life. But what I want you to understand is that there's a deep drive to seek and burn energy. We want to get food and sleep to conserve energy. And here's the concept. We'll get further into this because this is actually the key to how we fix the mitochondria. We want to fix the mitochondria because the mitochondria are the cause of all diseases of aging and degenerative change. The goal is to increase the throughput capacity. <coughs> we want to make all the energy management systems capable of greater energy throughput. Now, there are a lot of ways we measure that, but you better measure that or you don't know where the heck you are on this very fundamental um, definition. And if you know where you are, make it better, okay? Energy management systems determine vitality. Corollary concepts. Signaling molecules are the components of the energy management system. What the heck is a... Oops, I did it again. There's a way it goes back. Somebody probably knows it, and I don't know it. Um, nope, that wasn't it either. Boy, I really got carried away, didn't I? I could look up there, I know. There, okay. What are signaling molecules? Most of you have heard of endocrine uh, molecules, right? Testosterone is an endocrine hormone, and thyroid is an endocrine, 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 endocrine. Heard, heard of that? It's just, you know, insulin, thyroid stimulating hormone, cortisol, melatonin, gastric inhibitory peptide, testosterone, estrogen, adiponectin, glucagon, ghrelin, leptin, neuropeptides, and other interleukins. There are hundreds of, of energy regulatory. Molecules, signaling molecules. And you don't have to know a thing about hardly any of them because there are some master indicators of what's going on in this elaborate system. But let me give you a little clue about what this process is. Um, most people know that insulin helps the body lower their blood sugar. And when the blood sugar gets too low, glucagon helps raise the blood sugar. So that's regulating energy. Believe me, sh sugar in your blood is energy for your body, okay? This is part of the energy regulatory system. Well, that's only part of it. Let's go a little further. Many people have heard of ghrelin and leptin. <laughs> Mostly, uh, well, particle physicists have heard of some related concepts. Anyway, um, ghrelin and leptin, what's ha what goes on with that? When you are hungry, your ghrelin level goes up. When you've eaten, and, oh, and when, you're, you're, when the energy stores in your cells are good, your leptin levels are high. But it's not the same thing. You could have plenty of energy and be hungry, not enough energy and not be hungry because they're related to eating behavior. For example, if you have a good fatty meal, your ghrelin levels go way low. If you have fruit, your ghrelin levels don't go low. So some people are still hungry after fruit. There are some problems with that. We can get into that. But that's an example of an energy management system. Now, don't worry. You don't have to know this list. And I could go on literally for pages. Interleukin 6, interleukin 1. Oh, my God, it just goes on forever. But it's a matter of some things regulate energy up, some things regulate energy down, and all of them have to do with the engine of life, which is where the energy comes from, which is the mitochondria. The mitochondria is isolated in a cell. How do all these things act on that? Here's how it acts on that. You have to understand the site and scale of action of the signaling molecules. So your body's full of all these little signaling molecules. And signaling molecules just means little, little, little atoms, chains of atoms, that tell one part of the body something about the other part of the body. Signaling molecules. <clears throat> 
the scale in sight of action of the signaling molecules happens on three different scales. Local, nanometer, 10 to the minus 10th meters, nanometer scale. That's really tiny. For you guys that have been measuring LDL particle size with me, they're about 2,600 nanometers in diameter. Yeah, right, 2,600. So that's the, these are tiny things, okay? <laughs> Much smaller than a cell. So what happens, what could anybody be talking about on the nanometer scale? <laughs> well, when we get to the mitochondria, the width of the membrane of the mitochondria is a minus several, three orders of magnitude, well, what in the heck is picometers, uh, of, so it's very tiny. Well, guess what? There's a little molecule that tells that part of that membrane, something about that part of that membrane, which has everything to do with how that mitochondria functions. So there's things that happen, signaling molecules that work on the nanometer scale. There are signaling molecules that work on the centimeter scale. And this, all this stuff matters, by the way, guys. I'll tell you why in a minute. I'll tie it together. Centimeter scale, what's an example? In your gut, there's uh, one of those molecules I mentioned was gastric inhibitory peptide, GIP. And it has a reciprocal uh, molecule called glucagon-like uh, peptide. One, because there are several. And they both regulate over the length of the gut the signaling to the liver about insulin, for example, or how quick to dump food out of the stomach. So there are molecules whose job is to communicate centimeter scale over, periods, over distances this far. Remember, we're talking about we've got some things that communicate this far. <clears throat> Let me give you another example. I don't have any cuts. Oh, I've got a cut here. I always do. Um, that, that's inflamed. And white cells come to it. And they release some chemicals called chemotactic factors. That's just like a tractor beam out of uh, Star, Star Wars. Uh, and it attracts white cells to that area to fight infection over about eh, 10 mil, uh, centimeters. Okay, so there again, so we're going, we've got stuff working and talking to each other on the nanometer scale, things working and talking to each other on the centimeter scale. We have things working on the meter scale, the full body scale. What's an example? Testosterone works on the whole body. Serotonin, which we think of associated with depression, works on the whole body. There's serotonin in my toes, there's serotonin in my, well, there's some up here, and there's probably a lot in some of you as well. The point is, you've got to get this concept of, of things signaling, talking to each other at the nanometer scale, the centimeter scale, and the meter scale, and what they're talking about, with almost no exception, are things that regulate energy, which is the mitochondria, because the mitochondria is the source of all energy in biological, well, not in biological systems, in non-plant biological systems. All energy derives from the sun, photosynthesis, generation of fructose, glucose, liberation of oxygen. You go, get that? You got to think. It goes back that far, okay? So everything happens on these three scales.